everyone. How's it going? This is part two and the final part of how to get remote control access to your mining farm, specifically for power, but there are other options and other use cases for this as well. I will show you that later in the video. In part one, if you didn't watch it, I will leave a card somewhere up here at the top of the screen, it is why and how we installed this smart PDU from Raritan that we got off of eBay used really cheap for what it costs brand new. Part two, we're going to show you how to truly get remote access when you're away from this local area network at home, across the country, across the world. You can get remote access and take care of your rigs in the event that they start acting wonky on you and you need a hard reset and you're nowhere around here to do it. So the way we're going to do this is with this little black box right here, which is actually a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that 56 from Misfit Mining generously donated to me. Thank you very much. Uh, this is going to run a software called Pi VPN, and it's very easy to install. The only thing I had to get was a power adapter and then a C13 to an R515 adapter to plug the power supply in. Be careful when you do this, not all power supplies can handle the input voltage range that this does. This one handles from 100 volts AC up to 240. I'm running on 208 volts here, so it's perfectly safe in this application. So I needed a power adapter and just Ethernet, which then runs over to my front network switch, which everything else is connected to, and ultimately works its way on over to the actual Comcast cable over there. Now to do this, you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can use any type of uh, single board computer, a Raspberry Pi, an Orange Pi, a Rock Pi, all the different type of clones. They all work. I'm not gonna do a full in-depth on how to install Pi VPN, but honestly, it took me a little bit to figure it out myself, and I will actually leave links to videos and different documents that, down in the video description that I used to get this set up. It wasn't hard, but I, I don't think I can adequately explain how to do it in this video. So I want to give you better resources, and I just want to show you the use case for it. Now, inside Pi VPN, you can either run a regular VPN tunnel, or what I'm doing, I'm using WireGuard, which is still a VPN tunnel, but it's much easier to set up. And so this is now a WireGuard VPN server. So if we jump onto my phone here, just as a quick example, before we head on home and really put this thing through its paces, let's turn on my phone. And if you can see right now, we are not connected to the internet. We are on a cellular network. So I am not connected to this local area network here. If I come on over to WireGuard, I installed the application for it on here. You see Thanos is actually my home network and then Crypto Closet. If I connect here, it's going to give me a little lock key up top here. And we are now connected through WireGuard to this local area network through a VPN tunnel. So if I open up a page, you can see still not connected to Wi-Fi, still on the cellular. Going through the VPN, the WireGuard VPN, I am now accessing my Raritan PDU. There we go. We have full control away from this local area network. So now with this shown here, let's go on home and I'll show you a true multiple use cases for this setup. Okay, so we're back home now, and I'm going to run you through a scenario that this would work perfectly on, which I wish I had a week ago, because this would have been perfect. I didn't set it up at that point. So I'm in Hive OS, and let's say I was playing with Octo 1, which is the Vega rig, and I put some bad overclocks in there. The load average is going crazy. It won't respond to reboot commands or anything else, basically. It's basically hard-locked, and you can't get control of the unit again. Well, before, it used to be, okay, i got to drive all the way back over to the crypto closet, manually power it off, power it on. So what we're going to do now, I already have the WireGuard client installed here, running on Linux Mint. And let's open up Network. Bring it on over here. 
And here's the VPN. So let's connect to the VPN. And it only takes literally like a half a second for it to connect. So I should be able to now go 10.1.10.100. And now it's like I'm literally there. So I'm going to log in to the Raritan PDU. And here we are. So to continue with this scenario, we can go with the outlet groups and find the outlet group I made for Octo One right here. And we're going to click the little button here, click here for Octo One, and we're going to shut it off. And we'll see the power come down. Now, let's go back over to Octo One. Give it a few seconds for HiveOS to realize I just shut it off. And there we go. Literally took about 45 seconds for Oct or OctoMire. It literally took about 45 seconds for HiveOS to realize um, it's not talking to me anymore. So it's off. So let's go back over and turn it back on. Power cycle. One and two. There we go. And we're just starting to power up here. And as soon as we start seeing some high wattage, like over a thousand watts, we'll switch back over and we'll see this turn nice and colorful again, saying that the Octaminer is back online. And there we go. There goes the wattage up over a thousand. It will actually hit 1400 as it tunes all those cards. But we see it. There we go. It just came back online. And we are getting ready to mine again on this rig. So it's a great way to do a remote power cycle. Now, that's not the only use case for this setup. Now, if you've been in HiveOS for a while, you know you can always go here to remote access and you do a Hive Shell start. And we'll do that right now, real quick, just to illustrate this. Now, it usually takes about 30 seconds for the pop-up. You can click in. And it's sluggish. You see how sluggish that is jumping in there. And then we can finally do our MOTD watch. It works. It's not the best. And if you've been on HiveOS for any length of time, you've realized sometimes it'll stay connected for 30 seconds. Sometimes it'll stay connected for five minutes. And once the connection's broken, you literally got to close this shell and start a new Hive shell. And when HiveOS is having issues, that gets really annoying when you got to open up a new shell every 30 seconds just for troubleshooting. So the other thing is great. Since we are still connected through the VPN service, through WireGuard, I can literally just go right up here to the local IP address, click on that. Look how much faster it is. We, are, we have a direct connection to that unit itself. We're not going through HiveOS's server proxy to get a shell. We are directly connected to that rig now. It's much more fluid, responds a lot faster, and if we ever have to reboot the unit, we all, all we have to do is leave the screen open, and a connect screen will come up here, click to connect, put in your username and password again, and you're right back going to your troubleshooting. It's that fast and a lot less head headaches for it. Now, let's keep going with this. So, if I want to open up another window. 1, 10, 1. I want to get into the router of that local area network. There we go. Now, here's another great use case for this. I have a mini doge from Gold Shell sitting over there. The only way for me to change settings is I have to be over there until now. Now, I can actually go through the IP address for it and actually directly access it and change any settings I want to. So, in my case, should be this IP address. There we go. It's been the first time since I've logged on this computer, so i got to switch it to English. There we go. Now we can see my mini doge, and I can do administrative tasks for it. Do firmware upgrades, change uh, the miners, the uh, pool that it's mining to. I can do all this now, and I don't have to be over there to do it. So if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Again, I will leave links for you to set up Pi VPN down in the video description below. I don't think I will be able to explain it quite as well as these other people have. If you do have any questions I can attempt to help you, come on down to the Mining Misfits Discord. The link for that is also down in the video description. 
I'll try, but this is not exactly my forte when it comes to networking. You have a good day, and I'll catch you on the next video.